1K. A meeting. Could you join us for a quick debrief? Sure. Attending today are advisors from engineering, the archive scholars, and Helga. Oh. I'm just an admirer of governmental transparency. Byron's loss has unsettled us all. He's not dead. It may be too dangerous to allow this expedition to continue. I love it collectively turn towards me. It may not be safe, but we can't leave Byron behind. I agree. We cannot be guided by fear. We must do what's right. Let's not forget the dam's falling apart. What? We can't depend on Hydro forever. With just a fraction of the power that island can generate, we could grow this city into a planetary society. Or, quite possibly, destroy ourselves in the process. We should trust ourselves to make good at this opportunity. Wise words from one so young. Yet I submit that like it was 303 and then 101 were next to him. Valuable than mere energy generation. What could be more important? The Somnodrome, of course. If we could find a working model, it would herald a sea change in our moral and self-understanding. The question of how we should build New Jerusalem would simply be moot. The Somnodrome was supposed to let us interact with our own subconscious code. It's a cool idea, but it wouldn't necessarily solve all our problems. My own studies prove that we operate on an intrinsic moral logic. It's what makes us human. But our access to it is only indirect. Our ancestors created art, philosophy, and, and parable to help bridge that gap. The Sonodrome would help us to cut out the middleman and ask the source directly. We would finally have an answer to the great moral questions. It's a newfangled way to make the same old mistake of judging who's good and who's bad. Unfortunately, 1K left the Somnodrome in Whoa, whoa, whoa. But there may be a working device elsewhere on the island. What would 1K do if they found it? Freaking use it? I would use it myself, then see how I feel. No. This yes. This is much too important to decide on a whim. Hey, I'm the one going on the so expedition, much buddy. fun when we're kept in suspense. You all sound so sure of what's best for this city. Do you ever think you might be so busy changing the world for the better? You'll forget how to see that it's perfect already. Mm, it's definitely not perfect. Um, so clearly there are different perspectives in the room. Yes, real Jeremy. The only way we are going to move forward is if the team gets back out there. What's up, Mayor? We have to rescue Byron. I agree. We can't just leave one of our most important citizens in that death trap. What do you think about the technologies we've discovered? Apparently, it's possible to just magic things into existence now. But what is the cost, 1K? There's I don't know. always a cost. Is there? It's always a pleasure to speak to a citizen. What did the mayor say? I convinced him that we need to keep going until we found Byron. Yes, let's go. Did he want us to leave him behind? No, he's just concerned for our safety. And he's right to be. But we're going back anyway. Dub. Great trials lie ahead of you, my child. But your choices will determine the future. Uh, first time I've heard that. Welcome back to the mysterious island, everyone. How's the situation? Whatever Byron did seems to have sent the whole system into some kind of lockdown. I can't access any of the terminals, although I suspect 1K still could. When 1K connected to the data stream, the system assigned him a user profile. The rest of us are locked out, which means I'll need your help, 1K, because a lot of stuff doesn't seem to be working. What? Okay. Check it out and see what you can fix. But please remember, what matters most is finding Byron. I'm gonna get out of here then. All right, Southwest. 1K, I'm sending you a little software upgrade I put together that should allow you to detect which files will lead to a data stream overload. Unfortunately, I'm not doing this to help you avoid them. Want me to find them? I'm gonna need you to search for more. It's fine with me. Oh, dude, freaking Arizona. Wow, two objectives. What was that? Two naked dudes? Look at this place. It's beautiful, isn't it? Well, first time? Mesmerizing. Whoa, what's out there? That's how it lures you in, I think. Oh, whoa, whoa. You see all these beautiful things, and your imagination starts working overtime. And then the puzzles, the towers, the mysterious apparitions, it all draws you further in, deeper into the trap. What if every time you have one of those visions, another little bit of you is corrupted? Overwritten with the hubris of this place. What if I am wary of this place? Nah, I haven't been corrupted. Let's not be superstitious. 
I'm sorry. I didn't mean to suggest you were uh, whatever it is I'm trying to say. I guess I'm just disappointed in myself. What? Byron needs me. You all need me to do my job, and I can't even use a terminal. If this is all really the work of the founder, I don't know, maybe she lost her way. Or maybe we're just not ready. But once we find Byron, I suggest we get the hell out of here and never come back. I disagree, but I think we'll always disagree on things by uh, Alcatraz. Oh, we've seen this before, something like that. Oh, oh, that'll, all right. Ah, uh, from Thoya. Dear Founder, everything has gotten so much worse since you left. We keep pursuing the goal, but our lives are getting less happy. When the weather is dry and the dam runs low, there is nothing to do in the whole city. Things don't get fixed anymore. We even had to dismantle the cinema. I know it was frivolous and pointless when we can just watch video files, but it was fun to go watch movies together like people used to. I believe in your wisdom, Founder. I believe we have to avoid hurting the planet like our ancestors did, but I don't know if the mayor is doing what you would have wanted. Isn't there another way of reaching the goal? Please, I know you left for a reason, but I don't think we can go on this way. 5358535. Okay, I don't know what that means. Tell us principle 2B. A fragment from Stratton's On the Universe. I mean this. You have made quite the catalog of horrors, Stratton. Children dying in their mother's arms, cities perishing by the plague, and even animals living without peace or happiness. Nico Marcus. Why must we listen to this? You know I have just eaten a heavy dinner. Stratton. Because these things, which are ugly, must be confronted for us to reach the truth. He spoke of justice earlier. But are these things just? They are not. Then you must admit the universe itself is not just. If the gods exist, then they do not bend the world to their will. Rather, the universe proceeds as a machine, following its rules. Justice and virtue are human inventions. It remains unclear whether Stratton believed in the gods or used them solely as a metaphors. His work on the deities is no longer extant. Tantalizingly, Diogenes Laertius mentions that it caused a fistfight in the Lyc Lyceum. I don't know. Are you saying justice and virtue are therefore illusory and should be abandoned? The opposite, my friend. It is mankind alone that can impose these values upon this machine. I thought what had made us human was that we searched for meaning, but perhaps a better way of thinking about it is that we create meaning. Ah! Noema Project 8. There is a pattern underneath. Uh, new primary site, 4699, lake water for cooling. Ooh, they're working on something big. Here we go, we're going in, baby. Our ancestors kept telling themselves that the brevity of their lives didn't matter. But they had so little time to ever really think about anything. I've spent several human lifetimes studying this mystery, and only now am I beginning to see. The simulation was built on top of material reality, unable to escape its constraints. In the same way, physics as we understand it, even quantum physics, is built on top of a deeper reality. Yeah, I don't understand it. <laughs> define existence itself. There is a universal language of creation. And I think we can learn it. The language of creation? Alright, now you're getting crazy talk. Chill out there, Athena. The language of creation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. What were they doing here? Dude, uh, well, you know, and creating things out of get? thin air. I can't answer that, but I think I'll fix the tetromino bridge machine ring thing. Try it and huh? see if it works. Well, well, and there's another palm reader. I almost missed it. Oh my goodness, Thecla. Beloved Thounder, years have passed and there still is nothing but silence. Have we sinned? Have you abandoned us for our arrogance, our greed? Some of the others continue to build. I told them not to, but they don't listen to me. Byron is the worst of them. He disrespects you constantly, spreading lies and blank. Please know that there are those who remain faithful, who respect the limits you set and seek wisdom and humility as you taught. You may win the next election. Perhaps you will return. Praise your name. Shut up, Thecla. Trebuchet. Founder, although I was born in the early days of New Jerusalem, I never knew you well. This is not your fault. I became so focused on improving the dam that I didn't develop much in the way of social relationships, except perhaps with Melville, which I guess is not that much. That doesn't mean I was unhappy. I was, in fact, extremely content. I like to solve complex problems in peace and quiet. That's who I am. But now the pleasure I used to get out of my work has faded. I may not need a lot of company, but I want my work to be meaningful, to contribute. It does not feel like that anymore, and when I suggest new projects, the mayor acts like I've committed a crime. Like I should be ashamed. I do not like this. I do not care about social issues or debates. I do not want to get involved. I just want to be able to keep working on making things better. Please fix the situation. I'm telling you, bro, we gotta get a new mayor. Paying the price from the introduction to Portraits of the Martyrs, the list of people condemned for advocating new ideas is long and depressing. Ignis Semmelweis, utterly destroyed for suggesting doctors wash their hands. Ludwig Boltzmann, ridiculed for suggesting the existence of atoms. Robert H. Goddard, mocked for arguing that a rocket could reach the moon. Al Razi, attacked for questioning the existence of humors. Barbara McClintock's a discovery of transposition ignored for years. The list goes on and on. And we haven't even touched on what happens to those who suggest political rather than scientific improvements. Even when they succeed, they often still pay with their lives. 
These days, the ideas of progress is frequently derided as yet another narrative, identified with the establishment by critics who curiously portray themselves as rebels, but the truth is that every step forward that humanity has ever taken has enormous personal cost. What is this, dude? 535A. That means it's even more important to stand up for the truth, because so many others have already sacrificed themselves for it. It does. But what is the right way of doing it? Many died for the truth without accomplishing anything. Maybe we just have to do what's right and trust the universe. Alright, number one is upon us. Oh, it's a sphinx. What the heck? Okay. Phase entry. There's a connector up there or something. Wait, how do I even get in? Oh, teleportation? How the heck? That's crazy. Okay, and then there's this thing. That's the end goal. Alright, well, I'm going up. What? Oh, wait. Take the box, maybe? Alright. But now what? <laughs> I feel like I gotta get the fan out somehow, but how do I do that? Yeah, it just goes over. What? Wait, I need another thing as well. I need to put the fan on there. And wait, am I missing something? What if I try something? Launch me. Ah. Uh, dude, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't, is there anything up there? I have no idea. I genuinely don't know what to do. Hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on top. Yo, what's up, Melville? What's going on with the megastructure systems? Now, I suspect Byron is still logged in, and his presence has thrown everything out of whack. Entire subsystems are locked down, and everything that depends on those subsystems is disrupted. Have you heard anything from Byron at all? Probably not. There was a short burst of noise on the frequency we used to communicate, but that could have been anything. Alright, what can you tell me about Cornelius? He taught me a lot when I was young. Nowadays, people just know him as the museum curator, but back then, he was closely involved with every engineering project, and he was brilliant. When he encountered a problem, He'd always remain calm and keep working at it until he found a solution. I wish I could be that patient. Hmm. Why didn't Athena and Cornelius just vanish together? I'd say so that Cornelius could still go back for anything they needed. He was always leaving on expeditions anyway, looking for materials for his projects. Well, thanks, Melville. Melly. Smelly. Huh? What's up? Oh, holy. What did the mayor say? He blamed Byron for being headstrong and foolish, which I don't see it quite the same way, but it's easy to understand why the mayor would think that. It wasn't hard to convince him that we can't leave Byron behind, though. You may not agree with Herman on a lot of issues, 1K, but he's not a bad person. Yeah, he's I think he's just not a great mayor. Situation. Do you believe it was wrong for our ancestors to create us? Why do you ask? I mean, I don't think so, but because of the risk we pose to the planet. Just because I believe we don't need to expand and dominate everything doesn't mean I want us to go extinct. I know there are people who think that way, but if I care about other species going extinct, why wouldn't I care about this one? Seems Guess that's fair to me. Tell me about Cornelius. He was the third to be born after Athena and Eustathius. Eustathius. Uh, I'll, I'll keep saying Eustathius. In Jerusalem's early history, almost as important as Athena. After she vanished, he faded into the background. I don't think anyone suspected he knew where she was. I didn't know him that well, but he was always very calm, very thoughtful. Everyone respected him. Do you like text adventures? I do, although I prefer the term interactive fiction. All right. It's better at capturing what this art form really is. Storytelling, but with a completely different underlying structure. I didn't expect that. Why not? Well, I just don't seem like the type. I'm a joyless, by-the-book pencil pusher. Something like that. I'm focused on the mission, 1K, because what we're doing here matters. That doesn't mean I don't have my own interests or don't appreciate art. What do you think about Miranda's terraforming efforts? It makes me wonder why people always think they know better than nature. What was his atheist like? People rarely talk about him. He was in charge of planning New Alexandria. It was his mistake that led to the disaster. After that, he retired from public affairs and dedicated himself to his studies. Do you blame him? Yes. Oh, all right. <sighs> oh, it's kind of cold. Do you ever think your beliefs are a response to what happened in New Alexandria? You mean, am I unduly influenced by my experiences? Unable to imagine the better future Byron wanted because I'm too traumatized? Yes. Could be. <laughs> all right. But I'd like to think I'm a little more self-aware than that. I think we all hope so. Ooh, look at this place, dude. Look at the water. i never seen clear water like that in real life. Yeah, like, I definitely think I'm supposed to drop something into this puzzle. It's like, I can just get in from here. There's gotta be a reason this is here, right? 
I can't teleport into the puzzle. All right, well, there's a question mark over there. Oh, palm reader. Woo! Well, I'm not tired of reading at all. No, 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 no. Oh, good. Yes! Lifter's here. Thank you. Thanks, gang. One day, undoubtedly, an expedition will pass by this island. It will seek to document facts He's been here before. and statistics. Yeah, he's been everywhere. Reasons for us not to look more closely. This is what we do now. We seek facts rather than truth. Because truth might frighten and unsettle the comfortable people who like to sit in their conference rooms and debate which corners we should cut today. These people like to imagine the chaos that could come one day, like a comforting fairy tale of distant darkness. But they do not see the chaos that is at our walls right now. The chaos that also lives within us. A force that is both necessary and appalling. All right, well, now I can do this. But, um, what does that help me with? Oh, wait, because I can go like this. Okay, another teleporter I don't know what to do with. And I need blue? What do I get blue from? Oh, there? I can use it from here. Somewhere. Gotta go through that. So I gotta get the connector out somehow? Dude, what does it do? You can take the teleporter? Oh, dude, I didn't know that. Well, this is easy then. <laughs> and then I'll just drop the teleporter on the other side. Bro, that's crazy. Wait. Oh, it's freaking. Wait, hold on. I think I won't die if I jump. Well, I'll interface content. Another file from the data stream. Listen to this. Free research. Mother and father okay. think of our discoveries as a language, a code, but I think they're Ooh. wrong. What is that? They're so caught up in the technical details of running the experiments and upgrading the machine that they're not paying attention to the patterns we're finding, to the symmetries, the harmonies, the melodies. The fundamental language of so reality you... is a kind of music. Oh, I can't. Oh. And it's beautiful. Beauty oh, I... is an inherent property of the cosmos. I love the way she looks at things. Thanks for the input, Yaku. All right, well, we got three things to read. The Noema system. Pretty much all the tech on the island, from the puzzles to the megastructure, is run by a system called Noema. I've identified a number of obvious commonalities with the software that we use in New Jerusalem, enough to be certain that Noema is descended from our own software, although Athena and Cornelius appear to have upgraded it quite extensively. Noema seems capable of interfacing directly with the user's mind at a deeper level than our own technology, although this functionality is not used consistently. Currently, guest users are locked out of all functions, so only 1K can access the system, although he's locked out of any admin functionality. Teleporter. In some ways, teleportation is one of the less surprising things we've found here, and that at least particle teleportation was known to be theoretically possible. Of course, that's still miles away from these teleporters, which operate on principles that simply contradict what we know of physics. The transfer of matter from one location to another is instantaneous, without an observable wormhole or similar effect. There is, however, a release of exotic particles in the instant of teleportation, which decay within fractions of a second. Yeah, I don't really understand any of that, but alright. Okay, we can take this thing out. Heck yeah. And then, what is that? What is in there? I want to check that out. Can I teleport into a puzzle? No! Oh, I missed. There, green. And then, wait, hold on. There you are. It's just a connector. Well, I've got a green connector to do it now. Anywho, I will be taking you out with me. Thank you. Woo! No, no, no! All right. Puzzle has reset. All right, can't sneak anything out. That's disappointing. All right, time to go back into number one. Also, that's what was pressing it down. I see. So now I gotta go like that, and then boop, and then I can teleport through. Yup. That's so much easier when you know I can pick it up. More interface content. Expedition Megathread. I think the powers that Athena has unlocked are world changing, and it's our responsibility to use them to lessen suffering for all living things. We know, we heard your broadcast. I think we're being tested and Byron failed the test. Nah, what happened to Byron was an accident. Is there a difference ultimately? Yeah, of course there is one. No one's actually seen Athena or Cornelius or Miranda at the megastructure. They could all still be aliens. Nah, I don't think so. I feel like we need to at least think about the potential of all these new technologies. Maybe the founder is trying to teach us how to use them. Why is everything malfunctioning on the island now? Is it because of Byron? He was still logged into the system. His presence may be destabilizing it somehow. Or it's Pandora. She seems to want to stop the team. Dude, true, true. 
Honestly, I wonder if Pandora is just somehow malfunctioning. Like she's supposed to protect the megastructure, but she can't tell the friend from foe. The choice of Pandora as a symbol cannot be accidental, and the message is obvious. The megastructure is Pandora's box. I mean, we should not open it. Oh, maybe. Maybe. But maybe not, huh? Uh? Heading on over to number three. Through the wall. All right, well, there's a teleporter there. A teleporter here. Oh, this looks pretty easy. Oh, wait, shoot. Yeah, wait. How do I get the driller through? Oh, I know, I know, I know. There's bars here, so I just... Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I got it, I got it, I got it. Like this. Like that. Oh, shoot. I suck. Dude, I'm struggling, holy. Like that, maybe? And then, maybe? And now, go through, and go through. Boom, we did it. All right, that was a little complex. Oh, we did it pretty quickly. Hey, look who, you made it, dog. Listening to Miranda talk about beauty made me think. All right. Okay, this might be super weird and kind of pretentious, but I, I honestly mean it. What is beauty? Where does it exist? It's in the eye of the beholder. Or is there some objective component? I don't think it is an objective I truth. I thought it was just perception. But if I understand her correctly, Miranda sees beauty as a property of the universe itself. I'm going to say it exists solely in our minds. So if it's completely subjective, if hey, we're going, bomb here. does that mean there's no more beauty? Um, I think maybe once all sentient beings are gone, maybe. So I'm going to say no. So maybe there's more. But if beauty is only in our minds, how can there still be beauty after we're gone? There are other intelligent species out there. I know it. That's true, but what about this planet? No more beauty on Earth sounds pretty depressing. Makes me think that maybe we have some kind of responsibility there. Do you think Byron is okay? I hope so. I understand why he was impatient, but he should have been more careful. Yeah. Did you know Cornelius? Yeah, everyone knew Cornelius. After Eustathius retired, he was the only one left who was there since the beginning. Except I guess none of us really knew him after all. We all thought he was lost in the past, always studying the archive and the simulation. But he actually had all these secrets and a daughter. That's weird, huh? Are you disappointed in him? No, just surprised. Maybe a little sad that he felt he couldn't trust anyone with the truth. Societies unwilling to invest effort and resources into their infrastructure cannot remain functional. When you put it like that, it seems hard to argue. More and more stuff isn't working anymore, and eventually, there will be consequences. Yeah, it's like a snowball effect. Miranda said that the fundamental language of reality is the kind of music. Thoughts? I think that's one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. I hope it's true. What kind of music do you like, by the way? Okay, this may sound like a robot joke, but I love heavy metal, especially the more melodic kind. It's big, it's epic, it's full of emotion. You can really get lost in it. I don't think I saw that coming. Actually, I named Bruce after Bruce Dickinson, the lead singer of Iron Maiden. They used to call him the Air Raid Siren, which is also what my Bruce sounds like. I'm trying to picture a cat sounding like an Air Raid Siren, but it's not quite working. Just chilling against the rocks. In the early days, humankind lived in a world of unexplained wonders and Pushing terrors. Through. The powers of the elements were understood in terms of gods and spirits. After all, how else could one explain thunderstorms and earthquakes? But as the realm of scientific knowledge expanded, the realm of the mystical began to shrink. The sacred grove, as Hegel wrote, was reduced to mere timber. But, as superstition retreated, another thing was lost. Meaning. In a purely mechanical universe, people yearned for the comfort provided by gods and spirits. But there was no way back. But what about the beauty of the universe? The perfection of everything around us, couldn't they see that? I'm not sure I can see that, Miranda. What? But I do think there was another way. A way forward instead of back. Faith, not in an invisible world, but in ourselves. What? In each other. In the inherent value of consciousness and civilization. They never really found it. But I think that in those last months when their whole species was dying, 
They caught a glimpse of oh. you. And that's how your mother was born. There you go. You know, a couple of years back, we went on a scavenging expedition to an ancient industrial complex south of New Jerusalem. It was enormous, sprawling, an area many times bigger than our whole city, just dedicated to manufacturing. That's kind of nuts. It was incredible to think about the sheer variety of things they produce. Oh, last puzzle. And it made me realize how austere, how restricted austere. our lives are. You know how Minimalism. most ancient structures are overgrown? It's kind of pretty, but in a sad way. Well, this one wasn't. There had been some kind of chemical spill. I don't know if it happened while the structure was still operational or if something had just rotted through. What? It killed everything. Even centuries later, nothing could grow. What is going on? That way. And history doesn't have to repeat itself. Yep, but real. You do have to remember that it did happen once. What is that? Okay. Is that a way to just get back up? Or I can drop it down there. If that does anything, maybe. I don't think I'm supposed to bring it down. I'm going to place it there and I'm going to grab the jammer. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Because then I think I can. Hold on, I gotta. Wait, how do I place it? I can't freaking see it. All right, hold on. Let me. Let me do this. I'm going to bring the fan up. There we go. And then place. Put you there. So the porter mechanic is freaking sick. And then this is just going to open it up, I think, potentially, maybe. Yeah, I can't get that through, I don't think. All right. Well, going down. So we've got the accumulator, which. What does this turn on? Oh, so then I got to get red. Okay, so I got to go back up, I think. Can I see it? I got to open it. How do I open that? What? Oh. I see. Uh, oh, I gotta swap it like this, right? I think so. Yeah. So I gotta turn you on, and that opens that. Okay. And now I can accumulate it, and then I will just go back down and swap out. There we go. I can shoot from here, or not? Oh, down it goes. There we go, baby. Solving puzzles myself, but watching, watching me do it, yeah, <laughs> kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, I'm good at it. I man, Byron's got uh, he's got an i4 too. What's up, Stratton? Let us consider the city. All right, what is a city? It is not a gift from the gods nor the product of nature. Unlike a mountain or a river, it is something that must be built through the deliberate arrangements of material by a mind imposing order on the world, and it is built to serve a purpose. To that end, it has roads and fountains and walls. And okay. to the same end, it has laws and leaders. Okay. And though each city is built according to a different plan, all cities must serve their purpose or they will fall and become ruins. Therefore, we may conclude that a city Dude. is also a kind of machine. Everything is a machine to the sky. To improve the life of its citizens. Oh, private message. Helga, I was glad to hear that you're keeping an open mind on the Somnodrome thingy. I won't pretend to know what you should do if you find one that's working. I just don't want you to decide in advance. It's far too much fun to keep everyone guessing. Okay, got to dash. Ideas are contagious. But they don't sell themselves. Send my love to the rest of the team. No, what's going on there? Hmm? Oh, oh, look at this. I was holding up the, the rail. Dyad, number five. All right, well, I can teleport through. I go like this, I think. I got the teleporter out and the jammer out. Look at this, dude. This is so cool. So I guess the only one thing to do is go in there. This is the easy way. I just go boop and then go in, look through the window, jam it. I have another teleporter. Uh, How am I going to get the jammer in here? No, I don't get the jammer in here. I jam it through there. Ready? Now we go backwards. I should. Did I not place it right? Bruh. There. <laughs> Whoop. Oh, that was an easy one. More interface content. Oh, Yakut. Just wow. I just had to stop and take a picture. I never cease to be amazed by the beauty of this planet. Let's go, Yakut. I didn't know you were such a Chad cool figure and a photographer. You're so cool. All right, number six. Translocator. Our goal is to get into this area. Only thing I do is that, I guess. Oh, that opens this here. 
This teleport. Because if I close you, I can't get in. So I need both to open both. Like, I can't pick you up and teleport. It doesn't work. Oh, it's this again. I stand on it. Oop. And then go grab it. And then I want to swap it. Okay. And then I can stand on it. Teleport in. I won't be able to get it back out though. So hopefully I don't screw myself by doing this. Here we go. Oh, wait. Oh, duh. I got to place it more in. Okay, here we go. All right, there's no going back. I believe I have to place the teleporter there. There we go. Still have not found the other star thing. That weird, oh, more interface content. A matter of taste. Witnessing all this incredible technology discovered by the expedition has given me an idea for something we could all do if we had the resources and energy. Are you ready for this? Taste buds. Seriously, how have we gone for so long without something our ancestors considered so essential? Don't you want to know what pizza tastes like? What it's like to eat chocolate? To have an apple? What the deal is with fizzy drinks? I mean, come on. Sounds fun. The sheer range of new experiences. It's almost overwhelming just to imagine it. Please, please let this happen. Why change ourselves when we are what we were meant to be? You know we're all upgraded, right? This isn't our original design in the first place. And what's next? We start killing animals just for the pleasure of tasting them? We cover the earth in fields like our, our ancestors did? Subjugate the natural world for our own greed? I want to know what frogs taste like is crazy. Enriching our conscious experience makes the universe more aware of its own splendor. But how are you going to give it taste buds, right? Like, we could do smelling too. I like to know what cat fur smells like. And after that, new senses that old school humans never had. The possibilities are endless. Like, how would we make taste buds? That doesn't even make sense. It would taste entirely different, right? Like, they wouldn't actually taste what it tasted like, I don't think. I don't think there's any way they could actually fully 100% replicate a human taste bud. This one's pretty sick. Let me tell it. Aerial warp. Okay, that turns the fan on, and that turns that fan on. Okay, so the goal is just to get up here. It's, it's just teasing me, dude. It's right there. Well, the only thing I can do is to go place this teleporter right there. Well, then I go like this, right? Swap it. Going up. That pushes something along. Okay, so I gotta go down. Yeah, and then uh, grab the hexahedron. Place the teleporter on it. Go like that. And then I can grab the fan as well. I don't need it. Yeah, I'll place the fan there. I could probably just put both there, I guess. Yep, that works. All right, sweet. And I'll teleport through. Grab the hexahedron. Hold on, I gotta place the place the teleporter on it. Turn it on. Yup. Look at me go, dude. Look at me go. And then what? Just do the same thing over there. Well, then why do I have the other hexi? Oh, cause I probably got to double stack it, right? Can I double stack it? I don't even think I can. Oh wait, I can boost it. There we go. Okay, well, what does that do? Okay, there we go. Place it more near the edge. Scrap back Cedron. And I'm up. Oh! I almost died, dude. Remote interchange, puzzle seven. I could have sworn I've heard this song in, in the last kingdom before, dude. I swear I have. Great show, though. Great show. All right, so a teleporter. Freaking love teleporter. And then I just, oh, oh, that was gonna open it. All right, well, there's a jammer, but I can't get it out yet. Wait, no, hold on. I go like that. Grab you. Oh shoot! Did I just think I just trolled myself? I keep thinking this is gonna open that, dude. Yeah, okay, I gotta reset. It. L. All right, I wanna go like this. And now, open you. Grab the teleporter. Place. Go out. Place the teleporter. Alright, and then now I can grab the connector. Or hexahedron. I only need one. And we are out. Oh, there's a palm raider. Chernovesky 009. Holy. The question of our relationship with nature has bedeviled us since the earliest days of our species. Since before the first city was built, we felt that there was something different about us. Animals, we intuited, were part of nature. We were not. But of course, humans clearly are the products of nature, our history intertwined with that of every other species. In fact, the very notion of the unnatural is a contradiction in terms. Everything that exists must, by definition, be natural. 
So this view, no matter how common, is deeply paradoxical. This paradox has produced a great deal of confusion. Some proclaim us chosen by divine power, set above all other creatures, and are justly accused of arrogance. Others proclaim us as sinners, worse than other creatures, and are rightly accused of misanthropy. Others, yes, try to oppose this binary by saying that we are merely animals after all, but this too is manifestly wrong, and that no other animal is capable of having this conversation. It is in the contentious issue of our impact on the ecosphere that an answer may be found. Other animals have accidentally terraformed the planet before, driving other species to extinction. This is not unnatural. If we continued our current path, even to the point of changing the climate enough to cause a collapse of civilization, that would be entirely in keeping with how animals behave. But there is one profound way in which we are not like animals. We can learn to understand ourselves and the world. It is this knowledge that makes us fundamentally different. We have choices. We have control. There are many today who are afraid of the consequences of control, and would prefer a return to a state of animal ignorance, whether by blinding ourselves to the impact of our actions or by demanding we humble ourselves before nature. This is the response of an adult in crisis who wishes for a return to childhood, but this can only ever be regressive in every sense of the word. To resolve the paradox of nature, we must act as adults, accept our power, and act consciously and deliberately in shaping the world. We must become nature, and nature must become human. Wow! That is a meaty piece of text. This is the heart of the matter. Lifting up the world rather than lowering ourselves. But why do so many people so badly want to lower themselves? Do they want to, or is it simply convenient pose to strike? Upgrade. We upgraded the lab with my new designs. Synthesizing some of the pieces took longer than expected. We still have some bugs to iron out when it comes to complex structures, but it worked. Now the labs are safer and prettier. Although father says they look too much like spaceships, I don't see it. Do you? And Trevor. Today, we were delighted to be visited by a bunch of protesters. These voluntary extinction weirdos who think we're creating soulless monstrosities that will destroy the planet. <sighs> they broke into the facility and started yelling at everyone. Ooh. Fun, 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 right? Then, oh, then one of them lunged at Alex. Big mistake. Chernyshevsky grabbed the guy and literally threw him across the room. Dang! Almost threw him all the way off the dam. Oh, man. After that, oh. eh, the rest of them had a change of heart. <laughs> now, I'm telling you this because mostly... Some violence? Not this like that. But... And these people do exist. And somewhere in their shriveled little souls, they think that they're doing the right thing. They think they're being righteous. Now to me, what Alex is trying to do is an obvious good. But that's not the same for everyone. Oh, there's another palm reader up there. Woo! Ah, oh, Santi child. City by the sea. When I realized it was over, it was all really over for good. I decided to take one last trip to my favorite places before the symptoms got too much. I could never forgive what they did to Chaldikadiki. This incredible, wild, rugged place between mountain and sea, with pine trees all the way down to the water, the colors, the vistas, the sheer overwhelming beauty of it all, and they just built all over it. Hideous hotels sprawling like tumors, obscene beach bars blaring their awful music across the sea. Even in types, it was impossible not to hate humanity a little for it. The idea of all of it returning to nature, of the hotels gradually sinking back into the reed fields, was moving and beautiful. But then I went back to Thessaloniki, and for all the ugliness inflicted upon the city, the idea that people would no longer meet up beneath the Chimara, or go for long, ambling walks on the promenade, or for crepes on Platai Navarino, was unbearably sad. The idea of the rotunda just standing there, empty, after being a sacred place for so many centuries, it made me remember that it's not just beaches and forests that are beautiful, that cities can be more than just streets and noise. Cities can have histories and personalities, that means something. Who am I writing this for? Do I believe there will be survivors after all? Do I think that crazy robot project I heard about will actually work out? Do I hope that aliens will come to our planet one day and wonder who we are? The truth is I don't know, but there is something in the love we feel for the beautiful things we built, as in our revulsion towards unnecessary destruction, that matters. Why didn't our ancestors understand that you can build in ways that make an area more beautiful instead of ruining it? Even if they all cared about was personal benefit, wouldn't that benefit them more? In the long run, yes. But people rarely think about the long-term consequences, especially if there's an incentive to act immediately. And yeah, most of them were unhappy with the results. Couldn't they see that it was within their control to act differently? This reminds me of those pictures that's like a nice place in nature. And it's like, ah, yes. This is the perfect spot for a Walmart. Problem solving. Oh man, these are so long. Humans are problem solvers is a quote frequently associated with my friend Alexander Drennan. It's become a meme on the internet, used both ironically and not. Though Alexandra, of course, is entirely earnest in her dedication to humanity, it's a great thought and vital to understanding our species. One, she's also capable of being devastatingly sarcastic, but that's another story for another book. But it's not entirely as simple as that. Take, for example, the recent extinction of the orangutan and the ensuing conversation about the dangers of unknown pathogens released by human activity. Most of us agree that a problem exists. And significantly, most of us believe that something ought to be done about it. So we've identified the problem and we have collectively decided to act. So why is nothing happening? That's a serious question. A great deal of effort is expanded on raising awareness, but I would like to suggest that sometimes our problem-solving impulses 
and get stuck on the wrong goals. Awareness is not the issue. We've already convinced people that something needs to change. So if nothing changes, we have to wonder, why is the will of the people not being translated into action? Maybe the problem was that they didn't have enough hope. They could see the problems, but they couldn't imagine that one day those problems could be solved. It's easy for people to get so lost in the problems of the present that they think nothing will ever change. They lost hope because the historical circumstances they found themselves in encouraged despair. But that in turn meant the conditions could not change. How do you go against history itself? You just do, man. You just do. Rounding 7 from Hypatia's Journal. Day 372. Yemo died today. One moment he was there, welding a joint on the upper levels of the tower, and the next he was gone. One careless step. That's all it took. Athena brought him to the dam, but even Cornelius couldn't help. Yemo was gone. Now there's only 12 of us. I think about Yemo every day. So do I. You did nothing wrong. You weren't even there. I was. Recharge. All right, well. This is a design for an improved charging station. Dude. Fascinating. Sick. But not relevant. Okay, well, my bad. Shouldn't have touched it, I guess. We only take the relevant technologies, huh? Also, if it seems like I read really fast, I'm kind of trying to read really fast because, like, there's just so much to freaking read. And, oh, I'm stuck. I spent a long time in these videos reading. And I don't, I don't know. It's not the most interesting thing. I mean, I enjoy it, but I don't like when there's just 30 minutes of me trying to read. That's not super exciting. Also, like, half the time, they just use ginormous words that I don't understand. And that definitely does not help. Wait. Yeah! Ooh! Whoop! Pandora! If humankind had no more cause for war, it would make war for sport instead. There's no way. I don't believe that. I don't believe a thing you say, Pandora. All right, now I'm just looking for the buttons. Oh, it is. Oh, dude, look at that. One side done. I kind of see in there. What is that? Wait, you ready for this? Oh! <laughs> it's a puzzle. Can't go further. All right, I just got one of those behind it. Yeah, another vision, memory, whatever. It's no working twice no as fast now, and I think I can increase matter output by 25% if I tweak the modulator a little. I'm so excited. Nice to meet you. So excited. I'm Cornelius. All right. What? Oh, what? Dad, <laughs> this is science. You have no idea how long mm. I've been waiting for the right moment. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So corner there and then the bus. Wait, where's the plus at? One, see, it's like straight, it's like off. So hold on, I think you gotta orientate it. Orientate, orientate, I don't know. Because there's, in the corner in here, yeah, okay, so it's like this. The puzzle's like this. So it's here, here, and then the plus. Yeah! <laughs> Alright, number eight. Switcheroo, I love that. Our goal is to get up top by using a fan. Alright. I can teleport through. I should not do that. Unless, wait. Shoot. Oh, I'll get you this. And then go in. Yep. Done this a hundred times. Like that. Step on it. Boom. What do I need that for? Is that, oh, that close that. Get in. Okay, cool. What is red for? I gotta get it up. Oh, then I can take the teleporter. Yep. And then just switch it. Or maybe I think you go like this. Connect. Oh shoot! How do I keep it up? You're the only thing I can keep it up. But then how do I get up here? Oh wait. Hold on. Can I ride it up? No, I doubt it. Shoot! Now I can't get back up. Ah! Uh, I don't know. Will this work? Yeah, there we go. Okay. And then keep connections and place it. Yup. That's everything. I just gotta grab the last star. Whoop. When the heavens are silent, what is a prophet and what is a tyrant? Are you speaking of riddles? Oh, no one. No, that means. I don't understand the question. There you go. We're going in. All right, going up. Talk to me. Welcome back, creature of clay. The forge burns bright, but the sky is troubled with clouds. A mortal has ascended Olympus without the permission of Zeus. Am I that mortal? Tell me where Byron is. The workings of Olympus are disrupted by the trespasser. Pandora, fearing the wrath of the gods, has broken the paths to ascension. How can the trespasser be freed? Only Prometheus can help you, for he has always favored humankind over the gods and would see Olympus pass into your hands. 
But he is bound in the heart of the mountain. Break his chains, and he will show you the way. All right. So we need the boy Prometheus. I think it's safe to assume that Olympus oh, dude. is the entity's term for the megastructure. It looks like our best chance of rescuing Byron is finding Prometheus and freeing him. You know, I got to. How do you uh, see a weird <laughs> I just lost my right arm. Ghost thing. I suspect these entities exist within the megastructure systems. And what we're seeing is just how they manifest to communicate with us. I don't really care what they are. For now, let's play along. All right, come to skedaddle.